flipped and I flopped and I flipped and I flopped. And, uh, if you come to see me, you come to see the wrong one. Uh, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Uh, I started today and thought I had things figured out and then I sat down at lunch and got back home and sat at the table and uh, seeing how crowded the restaurants were and I thought, boy, we're awful cold. And, and the first thing popped into my head was Revelations 3, Church of Laodicea. And, and I started, I thought, okay, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. Then we got here tonight and I had something marked already uh, earlier in the week and I feel like that's the way I need to go. And, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 12 We'll start in verse 1. I've got two different places I want to read. And uh, and then I don't know what's going to happen from there. But uh, I thank God for His grace and His mercy. And I thank Him for His comfort. Uh, I'm, I'm nervous, but I feel good. Uh, uh, I'm glad that I'm not in a church house that's more worried about putting the Super Bowl up on the screen up there and, yeah. and more worried about worldly things. I'm, I'm glad that people still love the Lord. Amen. But in chapter 12 of Isaiah verse 1, it says, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou, Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. Amen. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Amen. Therefore, with joy shall, shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Yeah. And in the day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Amen. Declare His doings among the people. And make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. If you'll turn over to Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. I'll give you in a second. I'm bad about just naming something off and spitting it out there, but I'll try to give you in a second to get there. Amen. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, an injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in disbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. And I started Amen. thinking, I, I thought I had this Praise figured out, but I started thinking as everybody was talking and I thought, how else to share the gospel than to tell you about me? <laughs> and and uh, I, I don't know why it went this way, but I, I'm glad it did. I'm glad that I get to talk about His goodness, and I don't have to. I don't have to preach down at somebody. But I started thinking about how this come about, and this right here's been about three and a half years in the making, and. Uh, <laughs> I got called to preach about three and a half years ago and uh, preached my first message and I never knew what I was doing. Uh, I, I went out on my uh, preacher at church, stood up and said, the Bible says, use me. And, and it stuck to me for some reason. And I got out on my porch one Sunday morning, laid my Bible on, on the rail and I just looked at it and I looked up and I said, here I am, Lord, use me. And about that time, I flipped my Bible open. I've got it marked, but I never could, never could go back to it. But I preached Hosea chapter 2, God's love for His unfaithful people. And, and I remember at one point realizing what was happening. I just grabbed it and I looked down and said, Lord, what are you doing? And, he, and, and I, I preached about four messages. And I let the world get in my way and I let things be said and I got it in my way and, I, and tonight grace is what, what works. And uh, 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 Tommy, we were hunting and I could almost show you the spot we were standing. Uh, it's never left my mind, but we were hunting one Saturday. He come to me and said, well, 
you ready to come down to church and preach? And I just looked at him and I said, I don't think so. He said, can I ask you why? And I said, because I don't know if I've been called or not, Tommy. And he said, well, the Bible says be sure of your calling. He said, but I just want you to know I felt like I needed to ask you. I said, well, thank you. And I walked away. And three and a half years later, that held to me. And Sunday night, I hit an altar. Uh, I had battled with it off and on and off and on. And I would push it to the side, but... But he kept standing there. And Sunday night I hit an altar and I laid there and I laid there and I cried and I didn't know what else to do. And I said, Lord, you got to help me. Lord, you got to help me. And Because I can't do this by Amen. myself. I'm not, I'm, in my book, I'm not worthy of this calling, but, but I'm glad he found me faithful. But I, I laid there and I cried. I said, Lord, you got to help me. And when I got up, I told my church, I said, there's something I got to do. And it's three and a half years, almost four in the making. And I got to announce my call to preach. And when I did, I said, I even told them, I said, I got one place I got to go. And they said, and I said, I got to go to New Providence. The Lord put that in my heart. He said, don't forget that. And so I called, to, I went home Sunday night and, and uh, my mom and my wife were at home with sick kids and said, um, what are uh, what are y'all doing here? And I said, I got something I gotta tell you. And my wife said, You announced your call to preach tonight, didn't you? Said, yeah, I did. Bob said, You gonna call Tommy? I said, Uh, uh-uh. uh, I'm not ready for that. She said, Why? I said, Cause he'll tell me to come to church. And I said, I ain't ready for that yet. But then I started thinking about it. And the Lord said, You got somewhere you gotta go. So I said, Let me call him. So I called him, and he didn't answer. I said, well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Monday morning, bright and early, the phone rang, and I was with a customer, and it was Tommy. By the time I got back, I'd got a text message, and it said, I've tried to call you, Dad. I've seen a missed you call. What have I missed? I called him the first thing. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm getting better. I said, i got something i got to tell you. I still can't hardly tell anybody without crying. So I said, Tommy, I know somebody called to preach last night. And he said, I ain't putting pressure on you, but... I need to get you on the books. I said, I got to come. He said, well, let's come Sunday night. So I got here and I thought that I was going to preach on the church of Laodiceus. And and I, and I guess in a roundabout way I am, but I've got a job to do. Uh, we've got a job to do. Uh, there's churches up and down this country and this hillside that are closed tonight for a, for a, a football game. Something that ain't going to get me nowhere, but they're closing for it. The, the Bible says when Leah to see us, he'd rather find us hot or cold. And I believe we're a little hot tonight. But I'm asking you to stay that way. I'm asking you to don't, don't get cold on him. Don't get lukewarm on him. Stay hot for him. Because there's churches that are dying spiritually because they fell in their own way. But it's our job as a Christian. It's our job to be hot and to be instant in season and out. To look at them and say, come back to Jesus. That's where we belong. One day he's coming back and he's looking for the ones that are at his business. Yeah. That football game ain't got nothing to do with him. And I started thinking about how we let everything, everything gets in the way of Christ today. We have, uh, Everybody knows you guys have just went through it, but COVID has become an excuse more than a, than a cause. It's become an excuse of why Christians don't come to church anymore. And, and we've put that in front of The Bible says fear not. The Bible yeah. says, fear yeah. not, for I am with you. And, and I thought about how many Christians are sitting at home scared to death, and they forgot that He's already promised, I am with you. Amen. And, and I ain't getting Amen. on you about being sick and staying home. I'm getting on you about being not sick and staying at home. Yeah. You ought to be in the Lord's house, and you ought to be lifting up holy Amen. hands, praising Him for what He's done for Amen. you. I've got too much that I've set back on Him for, and, and I've done I've made it through things that I shouldn't have made it through. About uh, four years, but what's so funny is four years, this is the grace of God right here. Four years ago, I got diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, walked into a hospital, well, barely walked into a hospital. I couldn't even stand up. Got to the hospital and they couldn't find out what was wrong with me. That same time in the hospital, my wife found out that she was having a miscarriage. And, and lo and behold, what did the Christian do? I sat in a bed and weeped with myself and said, Lord, why are you doing this to me? What have I done that you're doing this to me? And it took a little Christian woman, I don't know her name, 
I probably never see her again in my life. Come in and she said, we're going to take you down to the eye doctor. And I was weeping and I was crying. I was in a spot that I didn't know what to do. And that little lady put me in that wheelchair, pushed me into an elevator, and she leaned over and kissed my cheek. She said, son, I lost my husband a couple months ago. And she said, it might be dark in here, but the sun's still shining out there. Yeah. And I knew what sun she was talking about because I was one of his. And then in that moment, I looked up Amen. and I just thought, Lord, why not me? Yeah. Why not me? You hung on a cross for yeah. me. You hung and died Amen. for me. Why not me? A little suffering here is worth it all over there. But in a... Uh, in that amount of time, I ended up, they couldn't find out what was wrong with me. I went to Vanderbilt about a month later, uh, got in church one night, went to stand up and just about fell on the floor. And by the time I got home, I sat down to take my socks off and I couldn't stand up. So we went to Vanderbilt and uh, at, uh, as soon as I got there, they, they ended up admitting me. And that first thing that morning, doctors come in, they said, we're pretty sure we know what's wrong with you. I said, what's that? They said, we believe you got Guillain-Barre syndrome. And I said, okay, what's that? And he said, now this is serious. He said, you may never walk again. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the one fear that I've had my whole life. I ain't scared of cancer. I ain't scared of dying. But I've always been afraid of being paralyzed. And I said, okay, if that's what it is. He said, but here's the thing that we don't understand. And I said, what's that? And he said, and I believe that it happened about five days or four days into a hospital stay at UT is when I become, I recognized that it was okay for me to suffer. And they said, this don't add up. And I said, what do you mean it don't add up? He said, you should have been paralyzed seven days after you got this. He said, it takes about one week and it takes you from your feet and it'll go into your lungs and it'll paralyze you and you should have been on a vent. And you're a month in and you're just now getting to where you can't walk. I said, yeah, yeah, I understand that. And they, uh, they pumped me full of IVIG treatment. And five days later, I walked out of there and I went rabbit hunting the next Saturday. But I say that because I'm kicking. I got legs that can move. I've got arms that can yeah. raise. And I should be thankful for yeah, that. Man. I'm thankful that His grace is enough. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Even in my darkest time, I, I, I could have turned away from him in that moment. And still yet, he put somebody in my path to say, Son, don't forget who loves you. Don't forget what he's done for you. Don't forget what he brought you from. And when he done that, about, about six months later was when I started preaching. And I thought, Lord, I've turned my back on you. I've looked away from you. I've doubted you. And you're going to tell me to do this? And three years later, I'm standing before you saying, Lord, I've questioned you. I've doubted you. I've wondered how this is put on me. But yet you're calling me still. And you haven't gave up on me yet. Thank you, Lord. And I've got something i got to do from now on. Amen. And I'm grateful that grace is sufficient, and everybody, it just, it blew my mind tonight. We sat here, and every song was about yeah. grace, and about mercy, and, and His goodness, and I Amen. thought, Lord, how can you not, how can you not open that up and read it? But I started thinking, when we looking at the church of the lay of the seas, it's our job to share that grace, right. and to share that mercy. Right. Churches are dying across the country because we're holding it inside. Right. That's, that's our fault. Our fault as Christians is, is we need to step out on our on our full of grace yeah. and say there's something better for this world. Amen. There's something better. Amen. We've got lost people everywhere around us. Share the gospel with them. Yeah. Tell them how good that grace is. Because yeah. if I don't tell them, they won't know. Amen. It's it, they don't. Their their unbelief yeah. is what has them there. Amen. It's our job to show them. Make it where they can't help but believe it. If I show, if I walk in every day, if I come to this church every day with a frown on my face, you're going to be hard to convince me that Jesus makes you happy. Yeah. But Amen. it's my job to walk to people, to be a light to people. I've got kids that are going to grow up, and it's my job to teach them from now to the time that I die Amen. that Jesus.
Jesus is good. Yeah. Not anything in me. I'm worthless. I'm as filthy rags, as filthy as filthy rags. But then you look at Jesus and He's worthy. Yeah. And when he, and he touches you and you just... I told him the other day, I, I started preaching in Sunday school about Boaz. Boaz shares the good stuff. And... Uh, yeah. I thought, and, and I just keep going back to that, but it's our job to share the good stuff. When you look, at, it don't matter how rich you are. It don't matter how poor you are. The good stuff ain't the money. The good stuff That's ain't right. anything else. The good stuff, share the gospel with them. Share the love of Christ with somebody. Amen. Boaz gave them food to eat, but he brought them into the family. And if you spiritually look at that, Boaz was a God figure. Yeah. And he brought he brought somebody that didn't belong into the family. Adopted them in. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Lord, that's me. One day he looked at me and he said, Son, you're unfit. Boy, you're dirty. But I love you. Yeah. And I want you to be mine. And he flipped a book open one day. When I stood up, the minute I stood up, he flipped a book open and he said, right there he is. The one I've been waiting on. Out of millions of people in the world, he chose me. One morning, sitting on a second row of the church, lost as lost could be, knew I was lost. But yet he'd come down. When I'd sat in church for five years, lost. Never felt a thing. Had convinced myself I wasn't getting saved. Nothing was ever going to happen. Next thing you know, I'm sitting in a little little church where people said, boy, they're cold. Boy, they don't talk to you. The first time I went, everybody hugged you. Everybody shook your hand. I thought, well, this must be a different place. About two months in, the Lord started moving. I was sitting on a pew one morning. I had a best friend sitting here and my wife sitting here and both of them thought they were getting saved that morning. I said, I'm sorry that it took that much spirit to move me out of that pew, but I was rotten. I was yeah. worthless. I wasn't worth anything. Yeah. But he just kept pecking. He kept pecking. Yeah. I felt like the pew was about to break behind me. I grabbed a hold of the front of that pew and laid my head down. I said, I ain't coming out of here. Can't come out of here. I ain't going to do it. My buddy, he's a pretty good sized boy, and he's sitting beside me, and that big old foot was sitting there. And I said, Lord, I can't even get out. There ain't no point in me even getting up. I can't get out. And about the time I looked, that foot just moved over. That's grace. That's yeah. grace in the way that when the yeah. devil attacks, and the devil says, you can't do that. Look at that. You yeah. can't do it. Next thing you know, the water parted on somebody. And I, when I stood up, I surrendered. Yeah. I was so rotten, I didn't even have to make it to the altar. Yeah. I just had to get up. And when I stood up, he said, now you're one of mine. You're a chosen yeah. one of mine. I went to that altar and all I could say was, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Lord, I'm sorry that I've lived this many years. And I've known how good you were. I've known about it since yeah. I was a kid. People used to tell everybody the good news. You don't yeah. get that anymore. Had a big old tall fella that had been best friends with my dad for years. I've loved him to death. He used to come all the time. And every time he'd see me, he'd talk about everything. But before he left, he'd say, I'd like to have you come to church with me one day. Boy, it ripped my heart out. And I knew, I knew I needed to be in church. And my, man, my grandma and grandpa were godly people. They showed the light. I knew I should be in church. My dad preached to me every chance he got. But I was rotten. I was enjoying what I was doing. There's, there's fun. There's in sin. It's a season, but it's fun. Don't let anybody lie to you. If you're lying, if you don't want to admit that, you can come up here with the rest of us. Because there's fun in sin for a season. But then it starts weighing on you and you start looking and you start Amen. looking. That's you right. go, boy, why ain't that working anymore? Yeah. Man, I need to try this. This ain't working anymore. Next thing you know, you start realizing something's missing and I can't feel it. I, can't, I tell everybody, there's a hole in everybody's heart and there's one person that's going to feel it. That's the only way you're going to get happy. When that heart gets filled in that one spot and Jesus moves in, you'll find peace in your life. I've been at peace since. Even, even when I was struggling through whether I should be a preacher or not, I still had a peace in my heart. Because he, I still belong to him. I, I still sat there going, Lord, you don't know what you're doing. He's going, son, I love you anyway. You might be dumb as a box of rocks, but I love you anyway. And I'm going to figure you out one day, and we're going to straighten this out together. And Lord, can I, I'd, I'd have never believed. I, the grace of God is so amazing to me because I fear, the biggest fear I had was people saying, his daddy's a preacher. That's why he's a preacher. And you know, the devil attacked me with that. He attacked with that because he knew I can get him if I just say, ain't nobody going to believe you. Ain't nobody going to listen to you. Your daddy's a preacher and you're doing it. 
I even had a guy tell me, it's in your blood. I said, it ain't got nothing to do with his blood. I said, it ain't nothing to do with his blood. I sat under my dad my whole life, and I love to hear him, but it ain't nothing to do with him. I'm glad he didn't call me, because at some point he'd let me down. He'd look at me and do something wrong, and it'd fail me, but he ain't never failed me yet. When I got up off of that altar, I was just standing there, and I had a hold of the pulpit, and I was looking at the cross, and I thought, Lord... I've been afraid to stand for you for four years and you hung there for me. Yeah. You hung in pain and agony for me and I've been running from just standing, just standing for you. Because I believe if I open that book and I stand, I told them this morning, and I guess that's where it comes from. I told them this morning, I said, if I go down there and I don't even open the book, if I can just tell them a testimony. Amen. Ain't that the gospel? Yeah. That he found somebody as worthless as me and saved my soul one day. And I, and I started thinking that Amen. the church of Laodicea and how that goes. And I thought, I believe this church is a godly church. I've been in it. i felt the Spirit in it. That don't mean all of us are right where we need That's to be right. at the same time. Amen. They may be somebody sitting in here. I may be speaking to you and I don't know. There's a lot of you. I couldn't name you if, if you threw a book in front of me. I couldn't name you. But there may be one of us sitting here tonight that's sitting there going, well, I'd rather be at home watching that. It ain't too bad to be watching that. Or I'm, I'm looking for dinner time already. My kids are probably back there starting death. We're used to 5 o'clock evening service. But we can put things in the way real quick. And that's where we find ourselves lukewarm. And the Bible says not to be in that state. Not to be in that state. Don't let worldly things overcome the godly things. Church doors are open. We ought to be in them. Amen. There's Christians in this world today, and I, I honestly believe Christian people that are sitting at home that have convinced themselves that they don't have to be in church. You may be right. You do not have to be in church to be a Christian, but you want to be a good Christian, you better have your hive in in a church pew somewhere. That's the only way. When he preaches, when he preaches, when anybody testifies, you grow from that. It says to join together with like-minded people for a reason. It doesn't say sit at home in a pitch black room and get depressed and worried and scared to death to walk out the doors that somebody might breathe on me. He says, come to me, fear not, for I am with you. Join together with people Amen. that you can boost your spirit. If I sit at home, I'll tell you, if I go home this week and I don't go to church for a month, I will, I'll convince myself I ain't preaching anymore. Yeah. That, that's because that's, how, that's how worthless I am. I'll sit at home and say, I'm so bad, I ain't even worth preaching. But it's my job to go to the Lord's house. Amen. The Bible, if you read the Bible and you believe it, they built churches all over the country when they, in the biblical times. Yeah. Why'd right. they do it? Because we need it. Amen. Nowadays, there's a church on every corner and we've convinced ourselves that we don't need them anymore. Uh -huh. And that's, that's a right. sad Amen. state to be in. Amen. But if you look at that and you start weighing that out and you look at, you go to a restaurant on Sunday afternoon, they'll say the church crowd's there. The only problem is half the crowd ain't the church crowd no more. They're just the crowd. They forgot their church house. Their pew's sitting empty. Why? Because they've made an excuse and they've yeah. overridden the conviction of God right. and they've decided that the church house ain't for them. Then what happens? Right. They convince themselves right. of their own truth. There's one absolute truth and it's laying right here. Amen. And he, he tells you everything you need to do right there and there ain't nowhere where he looks. Matter of fact, he says, forsake not to assemble yourself. Amen. There ain't nowhere in that book he tells me, you don't need my house. Yeah. But Amen. yet we have convinced ourselves as a, you go to China, you we are spoiled rotten yeah. is what's happened. Right. We ain't faced anything hard. And right. if the hard times come, if COVID comes, we act like it's killing everybody and we can't even breathe the word of Jesus out of our mouth. Yeah. China is sitting over there right now being murdered just to have an opportunity to assemble together. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a video one time. They were handing out Bibles. And these people wouldn't even get into the line. They'd walk in and start falling down and crying. They'd lay the Bible in their hands and they'd just lay on it and cry. Yeah. And I thought, Lord, why, don't I, why ain't I crying? Why ain't I holding on to that book That's like right. it's my life? That ought, to be my, that ought to be my centerpiece of my life. But I've gotten spoiled. And yeah. I set things yeah. aside. And, I, and I, I, I look at the Lord and say, you'll be there when I need you. How many of us have done that? I ain't the only one. I'll, you'll be there when I need you. When the times are good, though, Lord, I don't need you. I don't need you right now. I've got this figured out. Then when times get scary, then we say, Lord, can you come back around now? I'm willing to work for you now. I'm scared. 
Right. When times are good, we're sitting at the house. Amen. Amen. It's it's a scary time as a Christian in America. And there ain't nobody brought it on but ourselves. It's our job to stay hot. Yeah. It's our job when we do see them turning lukewarm. It's our job to bring them back to the fire. You see Christians fill the back pews? Encourage them. Come to the front. I, I called them out in Sunday school twice a couple weeks ago and didn't even mean to. But I said, sinners used to come in the church and they'd sneak in the back. They can't sneak in the back anymore. All the Christians want to be back there. Why? Because we don't like the fire anymore. He says, I want. We, he ought to find me hot. What do I got to do to be hot? I got to stay in the fire. I'm thankful for the Amen. fire. Uh, we had uh, Brother Dustin up at church this morning preaching. He preached about Elijah praying down the fire. He said, could you imagine if today we'd get right enough that we'd say, Lord, we need you to burn it and fire would fall down from heaven. He said, but what if we talk spiritual? Let's talk about that Holy Ghost fire, God, that we, we'd pray down enough that it'd get on every one of us. We could worship in that. And then not only that, we'd win souls to the Lord if we'd just pray down the Holy Ghost every now and then say, Lord, I want you to coat me in it so thick that when I walk through the door, they feel you coming. I don't have to say a word. I just walk in and they say, Oh Lord, something's in the house. You see, Amen. you can see lost people get saved. Amen. That's what the church needs. Amen. We got we got Christians yeah. sitting at home. Yeah. Let's get lost people in the house. Oh, Let's be the light. Let's be the fire Amen. that says, Come in here, I got something good for you. Next thing you know, the, the church will grow. Yeah. Help us it says that the sinner can't sit in the house of the righteous. How do you stay righteous? Stay on fire. Stay in the heat. Amen. If we'll stay hot, we'll see people get saved. Amen. That's the calling that has been placed upon every one of us. That's right. That's right. It's time to get hot. Amen. It's Amen. time to quit sitting back and saying, Lord, you just do this. You work this out. Lord, you can handle this. It's time to step up and say, Lord, what do I need to do? Yeah, here I am. Lord, here I am. Amen. Send me. Send me to do it, Lord. Amen. It scared me to death if somebody ever calls me in the next few months and says, huh, we got a revival breaking out. I need you to come down here. I'd probably puke. <laughs> but but at the same time, I'm puking. I'll take a break and I'll say, here I am. Amen. You send me. I've ran for three and a half years. I can't run anymore. <laughs> if, if I run now, I'm just running. I'm running the wrong way. If uh, I, I ain't worth it. But for some reason, he seemed fit. And I just think that's a ball full of grace right there. Yeah. I'm thankful for His grace. I'm thankful Amen. for His mercy. I'm thankful that grace saves sinners. Because without that, I'd have never had it. Amen. If it had been up to the law, I'd have never made it. But yet one day, He looked down and said, I'm going to send somebody. And He's going to be the Savior of the world. And He's going to die for you. Yeah. I could have been the only one. I've heard that my whole life. But I believe it to the bottom of my heart. I could have been the only one and he'd have come. And he'd have said, I'm dying for you. And then he opened up. He took a veil that was only made for the elect. And they'd go back there and they'd have to pray you through. And you better hope they is right because if not, you's in trouble. But he took that veil and he ripped it down the middle. And gave me a walkway to come through. Amen. Opened up the doorways to heaven that one day I could step in and yeah. be one of the family. I, I went from a Gentile dog to one of the family in one step. All I done was stand up and he said, Son, you're one of mine now. I get to be one of the family. Brothers, joint heirs, it says, with Jesus Christ himself. Can you imagine? One day walking in that into through the gates of pearl. Yeah. I ain't even worried about the pearl. I ain't worried about the I don't think we're gonna look down to see what the gold they say the gold is so pure that it's clear as crystal. I think of gold and I think of that yellow gold and silver gold. I don't even think I'll realize I'm walking on it. I've had one thing in mind. And there's a song that says, Look for me at Jesus' feet. <laughs> the one that died for me. Amen. One that gave me an opportunity Amen. to go to heaven. And just luckily enough, the Holy Ghost had enough power yeah. that He sent somebody here to comfort, and not only that, but to convict. Yeah, Draw souls to, to be saved. That's and right. looked at me one day, 
sitting on the pew, knowing I didn't have, I was sitting in, in the family of God and had no business there. Yeah. Sitting there knowing I was an outcast, and all of a sudden the woman sung, Do You Know How It Feels? I said, Oh, Lord. I'd heard that song a hundred times, probably at least ten times in that two month period. But then all of a sudden it hit different that morning. Yeah. She said, Do you know how it feels? I said, I said, oh, I don't know how it feels. I don't know how that feels. I don't know about it. woman popped up on the other side of the church and turned to a woman and said, do you know how it feels? First thing that hit my mind was, Lord, I can't lie to her. I can't lie to her in church. She's coming to me. She had to make it all the way around the back and almost to the front. I don't think she even got to the back by the time I stood up. But my wife hit the altar that morning. The Spirit of God was so hard that my wife hit the altar and thought she needed to get saved. My, my best friend Dustin said, Lord, I think if I'd have went, I'd have got saved that morning. But the power, it took that to Amen. move me. But I'm thankful yeah. that there's that much power Amen. in it. Thankful Amen. that there's a power in the Word that when, <laughs> when He draws you, there's, there's free will Baptist, there's this Baptist, there's that, there's this. And I, wasn't, I couldn't have sat there that morning. I'd sat through some spiritual services. I'd sat through some drawing power services. But that morning, it wasn't about me. The Lord called me out and I couldn't sit there anymore. Amen. He chose my name that day. I didn't choose Him that day. He chose me that day. He pulled me in. I've got little kids. Every one of my kids look different. There's a reason for that. I chose them. I adopted them into the family. I gave them my name. He gave me a name the day that He saved me. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for His grace. I'm thankful for the opportunity. Uh, if this wasn't preaching, then you just pray for me and I'll try better the next time. Uh, but grateful to be here. Thank you all for letting me come. Praise the Lord. Amen.